What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here just welcome. My name is Gemma Jade but today we are going to be doing something a little bit different because normally I don't cover recent missing persons cases and I even kind of stopped covering any missing persons cases at all because it's really hard to get the facts and like completely factual information off of the internet and I don't like reaching out to families especially in really recent cases like the one we're going to discuss today because they're going through so much I don't want to be like hey I'm a random youtuber give me your story what's up but I also don't want to get the information wrong so it's kind of a catch-22 however this is a very little girl again I was writing the script for MPNM and decided that I also would like to try and get the word out this is the information the facts as best as I could find them I tried to go back at least four sources possibly more to make sure that I had all of the information correct so no one is reporting anything that's wrong obviously I did the best that I could so I really hope that I've done the family justice I just want to spread the word I just want to help on Tuesday June 15th summer moon Utah Wells a beautiful little blonde-haired five-year-old girl was gardening and planting flowers with her mother and grandmother at around 5 30 p.m it's been reported that summer had kind of had enough gardening for the day and just wanted to go home so she walked with her short blonde hair gray pants and pink shirt the short distance from where she was helping to plant the flowers to her home and went inside she allegedly told her three older brothers that she wanted to go into the basement and play with her toys by herself this wasn't unusual for her or really any other five-year-old and nobody thought anything of it until that is less than an hour later her mother candace wells came inside from gardening herself and went downstairs to check on her daughter and couldn't find her the wells family searched the entire house and surrounding outside areas but still found nothing no trace of summer at around 6 30 p.m summer's parents called the hawkins county sheriff's department and reported their daughter as missing at midnight technically the next day which was wednesday june 16th 2021 the tennessee state bureau of investigation released an endangered child alert for the missing little girl the tbi changed this status however at around 11:30 a.m to an official amber alert the difference between the two is that an endangered child alert is issued when there is a concern for a child's safety and amber alerts are quote reserved for the most serious of missing children's cases where a child is believed to be in imminent danger end quote later that day june 16th at around four in the afternoon the hawkins county sheriff's department and the tbi held the first of what would turn out to be many press conferences regarding the case by the end of the day almost 30 tips had already been called in the next day june 17th in the early afternoon search teams were reporting that their efforts were being severely disrupted by quote steep and dangerous terrain end of quote as well as quote dense canopy coverage end of quote it was also very difficult for the teams to communicate with each other due to there being poor cell phone coverage in the search areas at around 8 40 p.m the night of june 17th authorities asked residents living on or near ben hill road to check any kind of surveillance footage or doorbell cameras etc to see if they could come up with any sightings of summer or any evidence as to what may have happened to her the community was also instructed to check any outbuildings for the little girl on june 18th summer's father spoke publicly for the first time and stated that he was at work when summer went missing he said quote when i got home i drove to the bottom of the property and realized all my neighbors and stuff were combing the woods and looking for her and i realized right then and there she was not there i knew right then and there she was gone because she would never leave on her own somebody had taken her end of quote this brings us to june 19th four days after summer had been reported missing and investigators shared pictures of summer's house and the surrounding area and property where she was thought to have gone missing with the public a week after she disappeared on june 22nd a roadblock was set up and cars were being stopped and shown pictures they were being asked if they remembered seeing anything strange in the area or maybe seeing summer herself on the night in question when she seemingly disappeared a witness reported that a toyota pickup truck was seen in the beach creek area either late afternoon or early evening but wasn't sure if it was the night of the 14th or the 15th the police issued a plea to the public for more information and also asking for the driver of the pickup truck which was in the area on either of those two nights to please come forward as they thought they may have had some information related to the disappearance 
Perhaps they were witness to something they didn't even realize they had seen involving Summer going missing. The truck was described as a red or maroon Toyota Tacoma, year 1998-2000, to 2000, with white buckets in the truck bed, a ladder rack, and was a full bed style pickup truck. As of writing this in mid-July, nobody has come forward about this truck. On June 27th, search efforts were scaled back. On July 1st, the Polk County Sheriff's Office in Wisconsin announced that Summer had an aunt who also went missing. Rose Marie Bly vanished from Polk County in 2009, and due to Summer's case, there was renewed interest in this case as well. This was Summer's mother, Candace's sister, Rose Marie Bly. By July 2nd, the TBI announced that out of the 935 tips they had received so far regarding Summer's disappearance, there had been no solid leads that came out of any of them. Hawkins County Sheriff Ronnie Lawson announced to the public that at that point, quote, everything is still on the table, end of quote. He explained that because they were still trying to locate the missing girl and hadn't received any viable leads, that everyone was still a suspect and they hadn't ruled anything or anyone out yet. Summer's father, Donald Wells, told reporters that he and his family passed lie detector tests very early on in the investigation. He said he and his family had little hope that Summer was still alive at that point. This case was especially frustrating to the authorities because as the assistant special agent in charge with the TBI, Shelly Smitherman explained, it's almost always the case that within the first 72 hours or even within the first week of an investigation into a missing child, there's at least one and more than likely several credible tips or leads to go off of. Unfortunately, however, in the case of Summer Wells, there wasn't a single one more than a month into her disappearance. She stated, quote, that is the frustrating part for law enforcement in this case and for the public. We will continue to investigate and to search for Summer. In the public's eye, there may not be as much media attention given to the case, but that does not mean that we stop what we're doing. End of quote. Summer Wells has blonde hair and blue eyes. Her hair is cropped short and she was last seen wearing gray pants and a pink shirt. It's possible she had no shoes or socks on her feet and could have been barefooted. She is about three feet tall and weighs approximately 40 pounds. Anyone with information about her disappearance and possible abduction are asked to contact the TBI at 1-800-TBI-FIND and that these numbers will be in the description box and also on screen, or they can reach out to the Hawkins County Sheriff's Office at 423-272-7121. You can also email tips or any information to tips to TBI at tn.gov. Authorities are asking the public to please refrain from reporting any rumor or speculation to the tip lines. They remind us, however, that any credible detail, no matter how small, could be the very thing they need to help in locating Summer and figuring out exactly what happened to her. Now, I fought with myself a little bit as to whether or not to release the next part of what I have in my information here, but... I want everyone to know that I'm only reporting the facts and I'm not blaming, shaming, judging, anything like that. If you've been with me for a while, you'll know that. But I think it's important that we get all of the information and we know exactly what's going on. So I wasn't sure if I was actually going to report this to you all, but I'm going to. Though both of Summer's parents have passed lie detector tests, it's being reported that they both do also have criminal records. Summer's father, Donald's most previous arrest came last year in October of 2020 when he pleaded guilty to a firearms charge and a domestic assault charge was dropped. A criminal complaint from that incident alleges that deputies responded to the family home while Mr. Wells was speeding out of the driveway with a pistol in his glove box and smelling very strongly like some kind of alcohol. He reeked allegedly. It's also being reported that he is not allowed to possess any type of firearm, so I'm not sure exactly why. I could have dug deeper and found this out, but I don't want people immediately jumping on the parents, the father. Again, just reporting the facts. Summer's mother, Candace Bly, she goes by her maiden name, was granted an order of protection for herself and her four children, Summer and her three brothers. This order was granted after Candace wrote in her complaint, quote, he drinks and he throws things. I am afraid of being hurt. He is abusive physically and mentally towards me. I am afraid for my children and myself. My mother fears he is going to hurt her because she is staying in the camper on the property, end of quote. Despite all of this, Candace dropped all charges a few weeks later and the couple seemed to have reconciled and also seemed to have been doing quite well. I reiterate, 
Donald Wells' alibi of being at work during Summer's disappearance was investigated by the police and it was proven he was there when and where he said he was. And also, I reiterate, he passed the lie detector test along with the rest of the family living in the home with the five-year-old very early on in the investigation. Though investigators did say that they have ruled nothing and nobody out yet due to lack of credible and viable tips and leads. Guys, again, those numbers and that email address will be in the description box below. Please give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. Guys, my likes are very much lower than my views and I do worry about that a little bit. If there's anything I can do to make the videos better for y'all and you have some, some constructive criticism, please let me know if that's what's making the likes be so low. Subscribe if you haven't already and spread the love by sharing this video. This video is extra important that we share it. I feel weird even asking you guys to like this video and subscribe. It just feels weird to me on a case that's this important. A little five-year-old girl just vanishes without a trace from her house. Do you know what I mean? So I feel a little weird saying that. Check out the description box for some important links. Justice for Caleb Smith. It's the two-hour interview with April Arrington that Steve Stockton and I did on Missing Persons and Mysteries. Also, our three live streams, Fireside Chat, Sunday night, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Campfire Stories, Friday night, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and our new Wednesday night show, which we haven't yet named. It's kind of like a variety show. Um, tentatively, it's named This Is Not A Talk Show. Farty har har. <laughs> but that's from 8 to 9 p.m. on Wednesday nights Eastern Time. Also in the description box, you'll find links for my Patreon and PayPal for financial donations to the channel. If you have any encounters or experiences with the paranormal and or supernatural, please be sure and email me at gemmajadeparanormal at gmail.com. Guys, I love and appreciate you all so much. Please share this. Let's get the word out. Let's help this family. Let's help this little girl. And hopefully we can bring her home alive. Her own family stated that they did not think she was alive at this point. I mean, that's got to be really heartbreaking and I can't even imagine. So really spread the love, share, 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 get the word out. Be kind to each other, guys. Always choose kind. It costs nothing, but also be kind to yourselves. Always go in grace. Have your best day. Have your best night. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>